Hello, bonjour, Calgary. Did you know that at least 238,000 people speak Francais in Alberta and that 90,000 live right here in Calgary? Oui, oui, c'est vrai, it's true. And now, thanks to Shaw Community Access Programming, we get to reach out to everyone to let you know all about our special people, places, events, and activities happening in this fair city in both English and en français. That's right, mes amis. We begin the first part of our program in English and then we repeat it en français. So stay with us. Hello, bonjour, my name is Anne Boiteau and today we'd like to welcome with us Martin Camiran, who is the principal of l'école francophone d'Erdry. Hello, Martin. Hello. And Martine Rousseau, coordinator of cultural services for the new uh, Conseil scolaire Franco-Sud. Welcome. Thank you. So, Martin, let's start with you a little bit. Okay. Tell, give us a little bit of the history of l'école francophone d'Erdry. Well, the school started back in 2005 uh, with only 42 kids back then, from kindergarten up to grade nine. And then uh, slowly I took uh, over in June when I was doing the same. I was teaching in a, in a different school and I took over in June to facilitate the uh, transition uh, when I started really in September 2006. And the school's been, it's been almost uh, eight years, uh, nine years that uh, the school exists. And the first year with 42 kids and then after that it went uh, through the roof. We are now at 280 kids uh, wow. this year from kindergarten to grade 10 that we just opened uh, this year. So uh, every year there's about between 20 and 25 percent of uh, growth Increase, uh, yeah. of students and, uh, and that's the reason why we needed a, a school that we're going to get in April. So do you think that the P the parents in Airdrie are well aware of the Francophone school or is this why the increase every year? I think so. I think that uh, since the beginning the, the school uh, was in a public uh, place in the Genesis uh, Rec Center. So the, ah. the parents were able when they were going to the center to see there was something there uh, as a Francophone school. And then after that the reputation of the, the parents be coming to the school and the kids coming to the school uh, they were pretty satisfied with uh, everything that uh, the school was doing. So from mouth to mouth, people were talking about the school and uh, every year we've been growing uh, very fast and we are now pretty much able to attract most of the st students that are allowed to you know, go to a francophone school. So uh, we don't lose them too much to the immersion school, we attract them more to our school the last few years, so we're pretty happy with that. That's good. And um, would you say uh, like half of your students already speak really well in French when they come to you or uh, is there a lot of uh, help that you provide to the yeah, students? We, we need to uh, Francis, uh, help the, some of the students with the, their French and there's, there's a program coming from a school board and also from the government to help those kids to get the support and help to get better in French. Uh, for those who come from families that speak both languages or uh, from grandparents that uh, wants their young kids to be able to you know, learn the language. But uh, I would say, I'm not sure about the number of kids, but I would say that uh, there, there, there are few in my school that uh, need some help in that matter and, and uh, we're happy that we have the, the staff in place to, to do so. And our parents uh afraid if there's only one of the parents who speaks French? Are they afraid that they won't be able to help their children with homework or do you see that? Uh, we see that uh, often, not, not a lot, but uh, sometimes there's an argument between the parents, well one wants to send their kids to a francophone school, the other one is not quite sure and, and usually that's our role as, as a principal, as a staff, to one day decide to just have a peek and come to our school to see what's going on, to uh, talk to them and reassure them that, uh, that it's going to be fine and, and your child will be in a, in a place that uh, is going to be able to learn in French and live the culture and, 
and uh, we assure the parents that they, they all will come to come to our school, even if they don't speak French. They are allowed to come and volunteer their help and help the, the in the English classes because we offer English ca classes as first language as well. So, so the parents feel welcome. That's our role as a principal to be able to, make, to reassure them, saying that uh, it's going to be fine. And, and if your child needs some help, we'll we'll get him the help we can to make sure that he's growing. Okay. Yes, language. And Martin, tell us a little bit about the type of work that you do in on both sides now, right? Yeah, With the Catholic yeah. side of uh, the schools and the public. Yes. Um, we try to have a few uh, gatherings uh, um, during the school, like uh, we have the Le du Drapeau, the raising of the flag, mm -hmm. uh, for all grade six students of all of our schools that are meet here in Calgary and spend a day and a half together and uh, you know by you know they enjoy themselves and also there's this more solemn uh, more solemn uh, experience for the raising of the flag and they're very proud to be where you know um, they're proud of the experience they're proud of be part of the uh, community the French community and we try to have fun in you know amongst all that and that's what we do. Sometimes we do, um, we have the um, forums, like uh, mm. sometimes conference when the kids are from certain grades, they all come to one place and then they, like last year, we had them all coming in um, grade seven, eight, nine for the one that they wanted, that wanted to come. We had 65 kids that came and then they had like, uh, they could, a like debate, a class, like, like yeah, no, yeah. Sometimes they learn journalism. Some uh -huh. of them they learn like uh, their rights, and then they some, you know, the all kinds of different, um, uh, excuse me, and all kinds of different things that they can actually go and discover. And then there's also the fact that they're meeting each other, and they don't, you know, getting to know each other. Uh, getting to know the schools, where they are, uh, you know, find new friends, uh, develop friendships, and uh, also for the teachers as well. It's a great meeting place, you know, it's all too, so they, you know, they have a sense of, uh, uh, of the community that they belong to. So, it, and, and we want them to be proud, you know, to belong to the community. So mm -hmm. we try to do gatherings and all certain gatherings. And also there's different schools. Sometimes I do um, develop some, we had like the, um, one of our writer, uh, Ber um, Brian Perrault, and it was a study like to also some of the, he came and visit all 13 of our schools. And uh, so that was a great thing because everybody knew he was going from one school to the other and they kind of followed the story and everybody they did a, a study, maybe they, they decided to do a study of the books and then they came in. So sometimes I do that, that's, I'll organize that. It all depends. You know, we have slams. So then we have I invite some people from to give some um, workshops, lots of workshops for the the student. But it's also it's it's all about the participation of the students. So at the end, we want to have a show, and then they can all show they all, can all present to their friends what they've learned and or to the rest of the schools. If it's only a certain grades that participated in the project, so they can show all the other grades what they accomplished and you know what they. But, but they achieved and so forth. So it's quite nice. It's good. Yeah. So you must uh, travel quite a bit in southern Alberta? To Depending uh, of the situation, yeah, you have to visit the schools. And we also have some leaders in every schools that are actually uh, cultural, you know, uh, leaders in every school. So they also achieve quite a bit in terms of uh, the um, francophone, you know, they try to enhance their. Uh, the experience of in French, you know, culturally for their schools and they do a great job and we have a few meetings every year to see well, well what do we want to accomplish this year, where are we at, uh, where do we want to go and plan accordingly but always in mind that it's for the benefit of the students and what are they going to experience so in their memory well this is all the you know all the pleasure all the fun that I had but it was all in French mm -hmm. and it was uh, you know and it's in a for them, that's what you want them to remember, and because you want them leaders, yeah. like you want them to come, you know, to become francophone leaders somehow in their exactly. lives and come back to the community and have a sense of who they belong, you know, in terms yeah. of uh, in French. Like I mean, we have dual, but we want them to have a good experience. That's good. Uh, what about um, sports? I know that's always a big question for parents. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, the francophones 
system has smaller schools and uh, maybe when they're in the ele elementary years you have a, a quite a bit of students but what happens when they go to high school and it's a smaller crowd it's, a, it's always a, a challenge uh, yeah. and you try everything you can do to you know uh, make sure they stay with you until they graduate uh, sports is one thing that uh, that they, they're looking for and so we had no choice a couple of years ago to follow that road and make sure that we have a sports team and then you uh, Whenever a school in Calgary uh, belongs to um, to a, a league, whenever La Rose Sauvage have a, it's part of a league that uh, have the charter schools, and we have the uh, different schools that uh, we joined like, a couple of years ago, and and we were able to offer volleyball and basketball and and uh, badminton and and cross country. So the students are proud to wear our colors and our name, and and the the fun part is uh, when they play on the court, uh, they use French as a strategy uh, <laughs> to, get, to get the game Smart. going. <laughs> but it, it's also the fact that, and, and, and it, it's fun for the, the other schools to notice that our coaches will speak in French to our players and, and they're all looking and, they, and it's, a good, it's a good way to be proud for them and, and to show the, 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 that they are proud and they will cheer in French. And that's, um, you need that in the school, even if you're not as big as a, uh, in some Anglophone schools. Uh, we have about 60 kids in uh, junior high, and half needs to play. <laughs> oh, that's that's pretty good. So 60 involved. kids yeah. is uh, a good number. We have that. greater chance actually to play. You know, yes, that's, uh, everybody in a big city, gets you know, to. Big school sometimes there's only a, it's a very only small there's percentage there's that do play. There's not many cuts, let's say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all get a fair chance. That's really good. And do they vote on uh, the sport that they're going to? They, 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 they're asked. Uh, they're to, asked. Do yeah. you want to play volleyball? And uh, and and they raise. And this year. For some reason, the boys were just wanted to put more effort in basketball, so they, they then f uh, went to the volleyball league, and they just concentrate on basketball to to get better every year and, and try to compete with uh, the rest of the school. So, so they get the chance uh, to play, and and now the elementary is coming into the junior high. Then our sports will even grow a bit more because uh, we have about 30 grade six. So we'll wow. have about our that's good our, our team that's for sure. Good. And you have, uh, in just a couple of minutes, maybe uh, UNESCO projects. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. It, it's, it's very important for us to, that the UNESCO is part of our school. It's a way to uh, to show our appreciation for the, the what's going on around us. And uh, UNESCO will bring to the kids the chance to learn about respecting others and the chance to learn about uh, what's going on in the world. Uh, so the, the kids will learn about those concepts through the curriculum and then they are able after that to, uh, to do some projects that uh, are meaningful to them and so they feel like they are a good citizenship, uh, good francophone citizenship and be able to help out the uh, community and, and learn about what's going on in the world. So, uh, and they get to choose their projects at the beginning of the year? Yeah, or? sometimes with the help of the teachers and sometimes the, 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 the children will, came, will come up with a project. Uh, they do a 24 hours uh, uh, outside every year, and it's, it came out from the from the students. They wanted to do that to help out the food bank in Energy, and so they raise money and raise uh, food, uh, and but also they want to teach the, uh, the, the, the 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 citizens that uh, there's a problem and there's a food bank, and they want to help out. That's awesome. That's really good. Well, I thank you very much for being here today and chatting with us about this uh, wonderful Francophone school and, and the new, uh, I guess, joined uh, council. It was a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. Thank you. We will continue en français.